फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू लेक्चर सिक्सटी of advanced steel design course wherein we are going to discuss about blast resistant design i put this as lecture 3 in blast resistant design we are talking about another parameter which is peak dynamic pressure given as Q not. This is essentially cost due to the air movement around the building. Blast waves. when propagate get mixed with air space around the building and that is resulting in peak dynamic pressure wind pressure also varies and influenced by the intensity of peak over pressure in case of low over pressure range with normal atmospheric conditions the peak dynamic pressure can be calculated as below q not is given by 2.5 pso square by 7 po plus pso Let's say equation number three, which is approximately equal to zero point zero zero three two of PSO, the whole square, cos three y. Okay. Where P zero. is called ambient atmospheric pressure okay having said this the net dynamic pressure is therefore given by which is cd into q not where cd is called the drag coefficient which is influenced by the wind pressure present around the building the drag coefficient depends on shape and size of the obstructing surface okay for example in case of rectangular building 
the drag coefficient is given by for front walls it is plus 1.0 for side walls rear walls and roof it is given as minus 0.4. Let us talk about the third parameter which is shock front velocity. which is indicated as u. In a free field, the blast wave originated from an explosion travels either at the acoustic speed or above the acoustic speed in a propagating medium. So, in general, blast waves will travel in the acoustic speed of the medium or sometimes even at a higher speed. In a low pressure range, And for normal atmospheric conditions, the shock front velocity u is given by Three forty five, I should say approximately one plus zero point zero zero eight three PSO to the power point five in meter per second. Equation number five. Okay. Let us talk about the fourth parameter, which is blast wave length. given by Lw. The propagating blast wave at any instant of time extends over a limited radial distance. This can be extended as shock pressure waves and travels outward from the explosion. Okay. The pressure is largest at the front and reduces over a distance. Okay. In low pressure range, and normal atmospheric conditions as given by Newmark, 
L w can be approximated as u into T d. Okay. Now, let us talk about idealized blast wave parameters. A blast wave profile is generally idealized as below. to simplify the blast resistant design procedure. If this is my time axis and this indicates the pressure axis, then idealized shock wave where ok let me extend extend this line this is shock wave, this value is called P naught and this distance is what we call as P S O and this duration is T D. It is an idealized shock wave for design purposes. When you talk about the pressure wave, time scale and pressure, so again called as T d, this is P naught and this is called P S O and this is idealized pressure wave. Your pressure wave is also simplified using equivalent shock load. So, let us do that. We know idealized pressure wave and looking at this peak, and considering this value, an equivalent low is established. And this is shifted at this junction. Okay. This is the blast load the equivalent shock load. Okay. So, this is what we say as idealized equivalent pressure loop. Now, 
Now, let us talk about determination of vapor cloud design over pressures. Design blast loads are usually supplied by the owner input to the designer by the owner of the building. It is custom designed or custom developed blast flow. Okay. It is based on the desired hazard level that the building should sustain. These hazard levels depend upon the material and the process used for the purpose. So, let us talk about what is design over pressure. The design over pressure can be stated in two ways. The simplest is all buildings should be designed for a peak reflected over pressure which is over pressure of x kilo Pascal, a peak side on over pressure y intensity in kilo Pascal and for a duration of z milliseconds. So, general statement is one way of prescribing the design over pressure. The second way of prescribing design over pressure is to specify over pressure intensity. and duration based on the expected or probable explosion that could occur in the structure from the potential source. Okay. Additionally, one can also conduct site specific studies to define the design over pressure. Then if you ask me a question, what should be the basis for developing such site specific studies? What should be the steps involved in developing such approach? Okay. 
the site specific study approach should focus on the hazard parameters and quantify the design pressure based on the explosion hazards. There are various steps involved in this. Let us see what are the steps involved. in developing site specific design over pressure. Define the worst release scenario. That is step number 1. Based on that, form the explosion cloud using emission models and dispersion models. Friends, there are different models available to define the explosion cloud. Please see the book written by me on health, safety and environmental management to petroleum industries. So, HSE book by Wiley and authored by me. You can have more details about the book in my home page. This will give you more information about various emission and dispersion models that can be helpful to define the explosion cloud. In step number 3, calculate the amount of energy contributing to explosion. In step number 4, calculate the blast over pressure parameters. Okay. Having said this, let us talk about the methods to find the blast over pressure parameters. There are two methods. One is the Strelo curves suggested by Baker. The second one is multi energy method based on T and O. 1985. Both methods provide family of curves based on the explosion strength. Okay.
the flame speed and or explosion strength. These curves are used to select the dimensionless parameters which are then unscaled to determine the actual overpressure. So, these curves are helpful. to determine the actual over pressure <coughs> over pressure can be determined at any point on the structure on the structure based on its distance from the source and then can be applied to the entire structure. The structure is very large and average over pressure can be applied to the surface. Okay. Normally, a building should be designed considering the potential blast waves from any horizontal direction, but not all directions simultaneously. Please understand that. Building should be designed to withstand blast waves. considering the waves as horizontal. If you consider directional waves, then one should not include waves from all directions simultaneously. That is the point. Okay. One at a time. There is something called a common criteria. Which is helpful to determine this wall pressure commonly used criteria is actually based on SG22 and CIA approach. I will give you this reference for the benefit of the learners. SG22 is siting and construction of new control houses for chemical manufacturing plants, safety guideline manufacturing chemist association, Washington DC. 
The second could be CAA approach, which is an approach to the categorization of process plants hazard and control building design. Published by Safety Committee of the Chemical Industry Safety and Control Council. Chemical Industries Association London 1992. Both documents specify at least two blast over pressures for the building spaced at 30 meters from the vapor cloud. Okay. It says that high pressure short duration triangular shock loading. side on over pressure of 69 kilo Pascal and duration 20 milliseconds as far as low pressure is concerned it says a low pressure wave of long duration triangular loading. Side on over pressure of 21 kilo Pascal for 100 milliseconds duration. Let us now talk about blast loads on buildings. To design the blast resistant building, loads on the building as a whole or on individual elements should be determined. So, therefore, we need to understand the blast wave interaction to obtain these loads. So, blast load on buildings depend on blast load structure interaction. Okay. Now, let us talk about 
blast wave interaction. When a blast wave strikes the building, the building is loaded by overpressure or drag forces by the blast wave. So, let us say when the building is strike by the blast wave, the building is loaded by over pressure or drag forces caused by the blast wave. The interaction between the wave and the structure is quite complex. When the blast wave encounters a solid surface, it starts reflecting from the surface and as we discussed, this reflecting wave depends on the geometry of the structure, shape and size and the refraction surface and it diffracts around the building. Further. when blast wave hits the surface, it is reflected. During the process of reflection, energy is transferred between the wave and the object. The incident blast wave is reflected from the building and it starts producing further compression of air in the vicinity of the structure. of the structure. On a molecular level, the surface applies an external force to each air molecule, which is sufficient to give it equal momentum in the opposite direction. Therefore, the air applies the same external force to the surface. Okay? Due to the change of momentum, pressure is locally increased above the incident pressure. This is termed as reflected pressure. Diagrammatically, let us say If this is my shock front, which is approaching the structure it passes around the structure. So, the shock front approaches the structure that is the first step we have. So, what happens is 
after it approaches, let us copy this below. Put it here after it approaches. it moves ahead but it reflects is a reflected beam Similarly, around the building, it moves ahead, but I will remove this because it is moved ahead. So, I will remove this. There is only a wall, the source, this arrow is removed. it reflects and it creates an vortex. So, this picture depicts shock wave reflected from the front surface and diffract over the structure. As the wave progresses further, let us copy this figure. As the wave progresses further, remove this, it creates vortex and the shock wave becomes here. We call this as diffracted shock wave. Similarly, in this case, vortex will be created. So, this figure indicates diffraction across the rear surface. Now, once the shock wave moves further, then the diffraction is complete. I will just copy this figure and put it here. The diffraction is complete I should say this figure indicates a complete diffraction. So, the whole set of figures A B C D indicate shock wave propagating over the structure. Okay? So, this is available in TNO green book. 
So, you can see for additional reading, please see TNO Green Book, which talks about method for determination of possible damage to people and objects. resulting from release of hazard materials. Which is CPR 16E, Committee for Disaster Prevention. due to dangerous substances. The Director General of Labor The Hague Netherlands published in the year <coughs> 1992. Now, for design purposes, we idealize this blast waves. We are now talking about idealized blast waves. <coughs> so, if you have a building, The elevation, the building is subjected to some blast wave. Okay. Now the blast wave will have three components. One will be on the four side. Other will be on the rear side. And one will be on the top. In addition, this follows PSO distribution. So, this is what I call as PR, this is PB, and this is PSO. Okay. Where PSO where PSO is the incident side on over pressure PR is the reflected pressure PA is the averaged over pressure which is indicated here. And P B is the back face over pressure. So, the building is receiving pressure from all the sides. Okay. So, these can be also marked as 
B W and B L, where B W and B L are physical dimensions of the building in the direction of propagation of the wave. Okay. So, one can see as time progresses, okay, the pressure intensity keeps on decreasing. Okay. With respect to time, the peak over pressure intensity keeps on decreasing. This is blast loading arrangement for rectangular building. Of size B L by B W okay, given by Forbes in 1998. So, friends, in this lecture, we learned more details of <coughs> blast over pressure. Parameters used that govern the design. and different ways or different steps to compute the blast design pressure. We have also learnt the idealized design load for blast waves. We will see more details in the next lecture and work out a couple of examples to estimate the blast load on buildings using these calculated values. Thank you very much and have a good day. Bye.